ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਦੁਬਾਰਾ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਜੀ ਐਮ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਹੁਣ ਖਾਸ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਸਮਾਂ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਗੈਸਟ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਮੁਲਾਕਾਤ ਕਰਾਵਾਂਗੇ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਅਗਰ ਕੋਈ ਅਨਾਉਂਸਮੈਂਟ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਮੈਂ ਪੁੱਛ ਲਾਂ ਮਨਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਨੂੰ ਜੀ ਮਨਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਕਰ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਜੀ ਯੈਸ ਵੀ ਹੈਡ ਅ ਕਪਲ ਆਫ ਈਮੇਲਸ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਥਮ ਵਾਸ ਫਰਮ ਅ ਕਿਰਨ ਕਿਰਨ ਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਫਰਮ ਹੈਂਡਸਵਰਥ ਐਂਡ ਸ਼ੀ ਸੈਂਟ ਇਨ ਅ ਥੋਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਡੇ ਸੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮਚ ਫਾਰ ਥਿਸ ਥੋਟ ਸ਼ੀਸ ਪੁਟ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਵਾਂਟ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਨੇਵਰ ਹੈਡ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਨੇਵਰ ਡਨ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਵਿਚ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਇਜ਼ ਐਬਸੋਲਿਟਲੀ ਕਰੈਕਟ ਸੋ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਵਾਂਟ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਵਿਚ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਨੇਵਰ ਨੇਵਰ ਐਵਰ ਹੈਡ ਇਨ ਦ ਪਾਸਟ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਨੇਵਰ ਐਵਰ ਡਨ ਐਨੀਥਿੰਗ ਲਾਈਕ ਇਟ ਥੈਨ ਯੂ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਕੰਪਲੀਟਲੀ ਨਿਊ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਆਊਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਬਾਕਸ ਸੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮਚ ਫਾਰ ਯੋਰ ਥੋਟਸ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਥੋਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਡੇ ਥੈਟ ਯੂ ਵੁਡ ਲਾਈਕ ਟੂ ਫੀਚਰ ਇਨ ਟੁਮਾਰੋਸ ਬ੍ਰੇਕਫਾਸਟ ਸ਼ੋ ਥੈਨ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਈਮੇਲ ਅਸ ਬ੍ਰੇਕਫਾਸਟ ਸ਼ੋ ਐਟ seekchannel.tv ਬਟ ਨਾਓ ਆਫ ਕੋਰਸ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਆਲ ਬੀਨ ਵੇਟਿੰਗ ਫਾਰ ਆਵਰ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਗੈਸਟ ਹੀ ਹੈਸ ਅਰਾਈਵਡ ਇਨ ਦ ਬ੍ਰੇਕਫਾਸਟ ਸ਼ੋ ਸਟੂਡੀਓਜ਼ ਐਂਡ ਥਿਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਵੀ ਡੂ ਹੈਵ ਵਿਦ ਅਸ ਰਾਈਟ ਆਨਰੇਬਲ ਮਾਈਕ ਪੈਨਿੰਗ ਐਮਪ ਕੰਸਰਵੇਟਿਵ ਐਮਪ ਵਿਦ ਅਸ ਟੂਡੇ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮਚ ਫਾਰ ਜੋਇਨਿੰਗ ਅਸ ਮਾਈਕ ਇਟਸ ਅ ਪਲੇਸ਼ਰ ਟੂ ਕਮ ਐਂਡ ਇਟਸ ਰੀਲੀ ਇਨਸਟਰਡ ਦ ਥੋਟਸ ਆਫ ਦ ਡੇ ਡੂ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਚੇਂਜ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਫਰਸਟ ਟਾਈਮ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਐਵਰ ਡਨ ਸੀਕ ਟੀਵੀ ਐਂਡ so do something different and i hope something really positive is going to come from today so i really think it will absolutely and, uh, yes. you're welcome and first of all tell us uh, your background please my sorry How about your background please? i'm I, i suppose most people think that politicians you know you know went to school got good grades mm-hmm. went to university becomes you know researchers but i didn't do that i was very bad at school um I'm, i think the modern word is disruptive when i really? was really uh, i now know partly why not an excuse partly why cuz i'm dyslexic Uh, but we didn't discover this until after I got in the army at 16 so as a boy soldier right and served in the army and those of you that see the troop under color the other week or back in the palace with those big bear skins and the red tunics that was me really? at 17 oh fantastic um, and this weekend for my daughter's 23rd birthday we went to Windsor Castle yes. to see the guards when they uh, as well as well as looking at the great state rooms and bits what so the army for 11 years did lots of different things parachuting I did advanced oh, parachuting yeah. and mm-hmm. and all those sorts of things then I fell in love Yeah. Um left the army for this beautiful lady. Aww. Who dumped me about 3 oh, weeks dear. after I, I left. Oh, this is going to be a lovely, oh, one of those lovely love well, stories. Well, you know, we will get there eventually in that story. <laughs> um reenlisted went back into the army. Um but then I I really had a, my time I'd done 11 years sure. and uh left became a fireman. and probably would still be a fireman today i did then meet, meet the love of my life i've been married 27 years oh, right. brilliant. i'm this very is... happily married so angie yes. tells me so um <laughs> so um and then i had sadly had an accident um and um had to leave the fire service and um sadly my parents marriage also broke up so i had to run some of the, the businesses for a little while right then went to university then went into journalism and the rest is probably history wow so you've literally done all areas of everything you yeah. can think of so you've got a whole host of experience and how did you actually um fall into politics i mean what made you go into that line well you said i never intended to um when i was um i was on traction for quite some time and on crutches after my accident and i wrote to my mp and never written to my mp ever a gentleman called sir teddy taylor and he's retired now sir teddy he was the mp in south end uh, a glaswegian in essex right. um so I thought you know what would this guy that we had no and he wrote back the most amazing letter in those days it was still typewriters the computers are ringing but not in very much use okay and Teddy smokes like what well, used to smoke very heavily so there was a bit of a cigarette burn in the corner of the letter oh dear and um so I thought and it said I've no idea how I can help you but let's try what mm-hmm. what did you actually ask in the I letter I just said to him look I was a soldier I've served my country for nearly all my life in, in, in the fire service Clearly I'm not going to be how to do that anymore. Have you any ideas what I could do? Okay. Mm. I had no idea. I mean and he wrote back to me and said, "How can I help?" I actually gave his house a commons pass back in 2005 on the day I took my seat in parliament. Never asked me my politics, never asked me for anything. Just said, "Let's try to see how I can help." And that's basically what drew me into politics to see if we can actually make a
gallantry inside the Sikh uh, soldiers was unbelievable in the First and the Second World War. Um, and Granddad had done that. My father had served in the parachute regiment. So it was a kind of an obvious move for me, perhaps not at 16. I don't think anybody expected me to go in so early. But it does give me an opportunity to look at things differently than perhaps of what the traditional perception of what a politician can do and what he can do. And it takes all sorts to make up our parliament. Definitely. And I'm part of the all sorts, I always say. <laughs> Well, that's a good place to be. And do you think um, having so much experience in other areas of life um, makes you um, the politician that you are now? I hope so. It's for others to say whether you're a good or a bad politician. There isn't a rule book. There's a rule book of what you mustn't do, but there's no book to say what you should do. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I, for instance, I, uh, I'm sitting there talking to you today. I, in my constituency, I probably can count on my hand that the Sikh family is in my constituency. But that doesn't matter. They all ma everybody matters. Everybody has ambitions and dreams and things they want to do in life for themselves and their loved ones. Sure. So to be able to help people do that, I think, is, is something which I'm very passionate about. But um, I, I also think it, it is really important, if you can, to have a mixture of different cultures and, and backgrounds in Parliament. Mm -hmm. I would like to see more, I generally would like to see more Sikh MPs. I think it's really important, more Sikh councillors. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Apple is a fantastic MP, but you know, actually, we need near more Pauls. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on the Sea Channel. I, you know, I'm, you know, I come from a part of my family's Jewish background. Um, I think mean, that's that really important. It shouldn't matter what your label is; it's what you bring. I think is what it's all about. Definitely. And when we talk about uh, more Sikh politicians, well, why do you think there's a, a lack at the moment? I mean, yeah. we've only got uh, Paul Apple, haven't we? Yes. And, I, and as I say, more Pauls would be great, um, no matter what side of the house they come from. I think that's the other thing. Actually, most people in my constituency wouldn't even know what party I am, because I, don't, I just don't do party politics, which sure. sounds strange for a government minister to say so, but I don't. I, I, you, you treat everybody the same, and come election, people will make that decision. I think that's very important. Um, I think there's a fear, to be honest with you, and also I think there's a perception that comes with that fear that, you know, you have to be a fairly affluent, uh, you, you have to have gone to university, you have to have been come from a political family or a political background or a trade union background. And it's rubbish, but that's the perception. And I'm not saying it's easy to become an MP, of course it's not. Um, you know, we have a population of what, around 60 million people, and there are 659 MPs. Mm -hmm. So you can do the maths, it's not easy. Right. But nothing in life is easy. And as your lady thought for the day, said, oh, you, if you don't do something different, mm -hmm. nothing will change. Absolutely. So, now, um, if we talk, move on and uh, talk about um, a recent news story, I mean, legislation actually changed in the Turban Law. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this, Mike? Yeah, I, I think, like most people in this country that wasn't from the Sikh community, I assumed that back in 1989, the issues and concerns around um, uh, safety and turbans had been addressed. I genuinely thought that. Sure. Um, as I said, I'd seen Sikh policemen. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'd seen people in the armed forces. I, I just genuinely thought, and we have, we have 4,000 people serving in the emergency services and in the military from the Sikh community. Yeah. So I thought that had all been addressed. No one had ever raised it with me in my constituency, probably because I had such a small Sikh community. Right. And then Paul uh, came to see me and he said, this was about eight months ago, and said, Mike, I, I know you're the new MP, and I know, sorry, the new uh, minister, but I, I know you've got lots of pressure on you. Like, could you just look at something for me? Yes. And of course, part of my portfolio is I have equalities and health and safety. And under the health and safety hat, he said, he said to me, can, can you believe the situation where on a building site, you don't have to wear a, a safety helmet, you continue to wear your turban. Hmm. But if you're unloading the lorry in the road outside, you'd probably have to wear your hard hat. And, you, and it was excluding uh, Sikhs seek, from work. Yes. And I said, I mean, honestly, I said to Paul, well, is that right? It's quite shocking. It was. Uh, to, I mean, I was just saying, is that right? Like that. And he said, yeah. yes, it's an anomaly in, in the way that it. I don't think the law is actually was wrong. It was a way it was allowed to be interpreted. So people are so risk averse, businesses were using other things as an excuse, or that on their risk assessment they said it couldn't happen. And so I asked my officials to go away and come back to me and tell me what I needed to do. They came back and told me I needed primary legislation. Right. Which is actually quite complicated. You know, you've got two sorts of legislation, secondary and primary. Secondary legislation is I could do it by regulation. I could make a decision, we would lay an order in the House of Commons and the law would be changed. Okay. Yeah. But what we needed for this um, at the time, which worried me enormously, was primary legislation. Fortunately, there's a, there was a bill already 
starting to be drafted called a deregulation bill. Okay. And this was perfect for that because the regulation was affecting people's ability to, to work and was also affecting businesses looking across to say, can I employ that, that, that Sikh man or that Sikh, in particularly in this case a Sikh man, then that's wrong. So yeah, we sure. got, the, got it drafted. It's not a big clause within the bill. It passed the House of Commons only last week. It's in the laws now, and I expect it to be on the statute by November, if not earlier. So this removes the anomaly, and there is more work to be done on this, which is why I've said to the Sikh Council, for instance, they have an open access to me and my officials to talk about concerns, because there will be certain, um, certain professions which it will be slightly difficult for, right. not just because of the turban, for instance, because of, obviously, beards as well. So the fire service, for instance, I'm an ex-fireman, I know people that have had to leave the fire service over the years because from a skin complaint they couldn't carry on shaving. Mm -hmm. So you can't wear breathing apparatus. That's right, there's you know. nothing actually, but actually designed at the moment. Um, I've got a daughter that's a marine biologist. Yes. We, I dive as much as I can with her. She's in Australia at the moment, so it's oh, a bit wow. difficult at the moment. Um, but we know of um, um, breathing apparatus or diving gear where you could wear beards. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I know there's conversations that have already taken place between the Chief Fire Officer in this part of the world and the Sikh Council to see whether or not there is a different form of face uh, where that can be worn. Sure. That not only will help Sikhs be, join the fire service, but highly qualified, very expensively trained firemen possibly mm -hmm. be able to stay in as well if the condition that they've got is only the fact that they need to, need to shape. Well, that would so be absolutely there. brilliant if we could um, actually get something So it's an like ongoing that. process. Yes, mm -hmm. it is an ongoing process. And if we come back now to the, the turban law, I mean, what, what does this actually mean then for Sikhs? They can go outside, um, they don't have to wear their hard helmets. Um, but what does this actually, well, it actually, uh, well, it actually entail? What it actually means is that, you know, anywhere wear a hard hat, will be expected to be one under health and safety legislation, you can wear a turban. Fantastic. That form of discrimination, and I think it was discrimination, unintentional as it may have been, because otherwise they wouldn't have changed the law back in 89, has meant that, you know, in high-risk areas, it's always been the case. But now we can argue differently. So, I mean, there's a case at the moment where I've just been listening to and talking with the seat council this morning about, where there is a business which they've got a safety issue inside the unit and they've put some netting up protect debris falling down right. but as under their risk assessment they have said that everybody would have to wear a hard hat in that environment now if there are Sikhs working in, in that environment that would exclude them at the moment possibly I would argue not because I would think it would be a high risk area so they didn't mm -hmm. need to wear hard hats yes under the new legislation they would not be able to do that now what it also would prevent is obviously the employer being subsequently sued if the person wearing a turban, turban was injured okay. based on the fact that was wearing a turban, right. but not based on the fact that the employer, for instance, had not done uh, the correct work they needed to do. So it doesn't take away that part, okay. but it takes away the discrimination of wearing sure. a turban. Sure. That's uh, fantastic. Um, and, I mean, when you talk to the Sikh community uh, and, you know, a lot, I know that you're obviously uh, working with disabled people in mm. that area. Um, and if we talk about that now, um, there are a lot of disabled Sikhs out there, as there's a lot of disabled okay. people in every community, mm. um, but they shouldn't be excluded from no. work. So uh, what sort of initiatives are you currently carrying out? Well, there are two, two aspects to this, I think. There, there is people's own aspirations and dreams. Um, and very often people feel as if they've been written off and left so to, to be on benefits. And we all know that work is the best way of rehabilitation. If, you, you know, if you've been poorly, getting you back into work as fast as possible is going. If you're disabled, and I, I, I met a lady not too, uh, too long ago who is paralysed literally from neck downwards. She can use her arms, right. but she's paralysed from the neck downwards. She runs an employment agency mm -hmm. from her bed. Wow, and the screen's very inspirational. Up on top. It's yeah. absolutely inspirational. I mean, Simon Weston, one of the greatest living British heroes who got terrible burns in the Falklands, has never had a day where he hasn't worked. Sure. Because he's been given you know, help and support to do so. So whether you're in the Sikh community or, or, or anywhere else in, in, in this great country of ours, then we should help you and give you the opportunities to work mm. if that's possible. The second part of that, of course, is to give the confidence to the employers that if you give people a chance, they will be more dedicated and more committed than we know this, than any other form of employee. Yes. Because you've given them that opportunity. That's what I want, not just for the Sikh community that have disabled or long-term conditions, absolutely across the board. 
Definitely. So how exactly can we help um, disabled people get into work? What are the steps that we can do? Well, firstly, if you're in business, when, when you're, and, and you're supposed to do this under the Equality Act, but let's forget the legislation, give people a chance. So when you're advertising, when you're looking, don't look at why someone can't work for you, look, look to see how can they. There is help out there, access to work means that there, we, there is money to help with, with, with adaptations, there are ways, means we can do this. But unless you have an open mind as to what these people could give you, you're not going to employ them. So that's the biggest thing I would say to all of your, your viewers today, just give, give them a chance. Disabled people or people with long-term conditions have the same dreams and aspirations, their parents, their grandparents have the same aspirations and dreams that sure. we all have. Um, I, I mean, I met a group of um, ladies the other day who are, they want me to say, they're, they're visually impaired, they're really seriously, they are blind. I mean, not a technical term, but that's where, where we are. Yeah. They said to me, I said to them, what would you like to do most? Um, and they said, well, we actually would like to drive. Now, at the time of that conversation, I hadn't heard about this car that you, is going to be on the market pretty soon, which drives itself. Yes. So I said that's going to be yeah. quite difficult. And they accepted that. I said, what else did they do? They said, we'd like to do what you've done, Mike. And I said, what's that? We'd like to parachute. Now these girls are um, thought that they'd never ever be able to do that. I think they will be able to do that. We can arrange for a buddy jump for them. They're going to have to raise some money for charity to. Oh, to brilliant! Help so you're actually going yeah. to, to so help they will be them parachute. They will be strapped to some be rigorous uh, parachutist. Sure. Um, I knew it was sexist there, but there we are for everyone. <laughs> and, um, and, and we think they will, they will be able to do that. There is there is very little that you can't do if we reverse. The situation of saying instead of what you can't do yeah. to see how you can do. I've got people. I've got a fantastic snow centre, indoor real snow centre in my constituency. Right. And if you saw the Paralympics in Sochi, you will see lots of people with physical disabilities. Unbelievable sportsmen and women. Yeah, definitely. But you see very few people with learning difficulties, or with uh, mental health conditions or other things. Why are they not skiing? Answer: mm. They are now. New charity started up. I'm a, a trustee of that charity, and we've seen people with severe autism that really could not uh, you know, be able to be basically a wheelchair user. They couldn't really uh, be active on their own. Yes. They're not on sledges. They're not sitting now. Mm -hmm. They're up on skis. Well, right, we're using harnesses and other methodologies. but giving them the freedom to do what everybody else does, which is have fun Definitely. and enjoy life. Sure, and how can we raise awareness then um, about this? Invite me on to your wonderful <laughs> TV show to talk about it. Some more. I mean, that's what we've done. We, we've just done, we've gone around the regions yeah. um, and we've been out and talking to the businesses. Um, I've now I've got a pack that's going to be released to all the MPs. So I hope all the MPs in your area are going to be listening to this because if they don't do it, I'm going to name and shame they haven't. And I've sent an <laughs> idiot's guide out right. to them. Well, it will be going out quite soon as to how they can run their own sure. business roadshow for to get people with disability and long-term conditions into employment and invite the business to do it. My people will help them. There's some really good videos from, you know, some, some really famous people out there saying, give these people a chance. That goes to 659 uh, constituencies in the next four weeks. Hopefully, all 659 MPs will take up that opportunity to actually help people in their constituency. If they don't, I'm sure the local press will be very interested. Mm. Fingers crossed, yes, all that goes well. And uh, Mike, finally, I mean, uh, you know, you've had to work with the Sikh community uh, quite a lot now, um, especially due to mm. uh, the helmet case. And uh, have you learned anything new about the Sikh culture or about the Sikh religion or anything like that? So you that your terminology, I've had to work with them. Um, I've enjoyed working yes. with them. I invited them in to me. Um, I, would, I think you'd have to ask them whether or not um, they found it beneficial. I hope they have. I, I, the, the one thing I've learned about the Sikh community, which I didn't know before, is just how aspirational you are you know, as, 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 a, as, a, as a culture and as a group of people. I think, you know, particularly for the ladies. Um, but I've got a, quite a large um, uh, Asian community in my constituency. Sure. And it is quite hard sometimes to convince them that, you know, that the, the girls should have the same dreams and aspirations. Uh, which I always refer to as the boys. But in the Sikh community, the, the, I've learned that the girls are just as feisty as the men. Which you is think good so? <laughs> Absolutely. But there's a, you're a perfect example. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, should, uh, I should hope so. Uh, well, it's, it's coming up. Uh, we're nearing towards the end. Um, so uh, what message uh, would you like to, to give uh, to the viewers of the uh, Sikh channel? Oh, well, the, the message is my door is open. The government's yes. door is open. Rather than have rumour, talk to us. 
If you talk to us, very often we can alleviate the rumours, because often rumours are, are not factual. If there are issues, and we just talked about, for instance, the breathing apparatus for, for people that want to be in the fire service, if we try, we can resolve most of these things. So speak to with, with your leaders, speak to your MPs, uh, use Paul as a conduit again if you want to, to come to me and the other ministers. The more you talk to us, the better it will be for everybody. Brilliant. And we can't, uh, we can't let you go without talking about uh, the World Cup. I mean, who, who are you supporting at the moment, Mike? Um, <laughs> I'm in a state of depression, actually. Um, I'm, a, I'm a sports nut, um, so, right. and I still stupidly play rugby. I waddle around. I'm not okay. brilliant. <laughs> But in the same week, England got thrashed against Sri Lanka. Yeah. We got thrashed, really, against New Zealand at rugby. And then we got knocked out of the World Cup. And now I'm relying on a Scotsman to actually cheer me up at, at, at Wimbledon. I'm really depressed at the moment. It, it is um, quite depressing So time, um, I, I was, uh, interestingly enough, I wanted some of the minnows to come through. I mean, I, I thought Algeria played brilliantly well. Yeah, they um, did. Mm -hmm. and, they they and were I, absolutely yeah, brilliant. Um, so, I don't know. I, um, all, all of the... Um, the bigger, the bigger countries, you know, we expect it really to be there. So the Brazils, and that was close with the penalties the other night, wasn't it? It's struggling. People uh, are struggling yeah. out there. I think it's, it's quite pressure. surprising. I think it's pressure on them. Then the whole yeah. country is saying that, you know, this is going to be a disastrous World Cup if you don't win. Mm -hmm. And you saw all the troubles out there just before the World, the World Cup as well. Sure. So all I want is a minnow to be at least be in the final. Yeah, so, definitely. That'd be good. Well, Mike, I think you should change your profession to maybe a sporting correspondent, perhaps. That's a great idea. Yeah, I think so. You're uh, very, very good at it, I must <laughs> say. <laughs> well, thank you very thank much you for, for, for coming on to the breakfast show. Really, really do appreciate it. You're very, We're very, very honoured. Because we do it again sometime. Morning. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, it's an open invitation for you. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, so that was uh, Mike Penning there. We do thank him indeed for coming on to the show this morning. Now, we're just going to have a short ad break. We'll be after the break. We've got our second guest coming up for you next. कल भी ऐसी शोध वेच काल के तीसरे दिन बारे भी अवेयरनेस पैदा की थी तो बहुत बहुत नमाद कर दें हमें ते सेकंड का सारे कुल तैयार है तो सही चढ़ के नहीं जाना इसी तरह बने रहना एक लेने छोटी जी कमर्शियल बैग मिल दें ब्रेक तो बाद वाही गुरुजी का खालसा वाही गुरुजी की फतेह जी थैंक यू